Hey everybody and welcome to this tips and tricks video. My name is Dave Hedeman, the application specialist for the steel segment here at Trimble. And today I'm doing an overview of the customization options for your ribbons. Now the Techly UI was renewed back in 2016 and at that time we did a video on customizing your ribbon. But the dialog box has changed a little bit since then. And also there's probably a lot of new folks since 2016 that maybe don't even know this is available or how they should go about doing it. Um, so this is just going to be a pretty brief overview to show you some basics. Now, as you might see in my ribbon above, I've actually already customized this quite a bit. And um, just a couple of things. First, I've created a custom tab. I called it My Preferred Tools. Here you can see I've grouped the steel tools I use the most, concrete tools, editing tools, dimensioning tools, and so on. Now I didn't finish through the drawings uh, ribbon and everything else, but this should give you a pretty good idea of the type of customization that's going to be available to you. Now I'm personally a fan of the old school toolbar style, so that's kind of what I've replicated here, but you can of course go in many different directions with this. So to edit your ribbon, you want to go to your file menu and go to settings and then ribbon. And like I said, if you've done this in the past and if you looked at the older video, you'll notice that this dialog box looks completely different uh, than the way it was a few years ago. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to restore the original ribbon. And by the way, for the purposes of this demonstration, I am using a diamond license. Your licenses uh, are going to dictate what the way your ribbon, you know, at least the way your default ribbon looks. So I'm using a diamond license, so that's why my ribbon looks the way that it does. If you're working with a carbon uh, or a graphite, your ribbons by default are going to look a little bit different. So first off, you can see here is a representation of the actual ribbon that I'm working with. And some of the first things that I might personally do are get rid of the things that I don't need. Now I'm a steel detailer, so these rebar tools here are probably not going to be much use to me. So I can simply select that ribbon tab, press the delete key on my keyboard, and it's gone. Same thing for like analysis and design, not really my bag, so I'll go ahead and hit delete. And already my ribbon is getting cleaned up. Now if I wanted to add a new tab, I can simply come down here to the ribbon items where we've got buttons, check buttons, split buttons, and so on. I'll choose the tab option. I'll call it uh, my stuff just for fun. And then I can click add tab. And as you can see, it's added that my stuff to the end of all the other tabs. Now I can simply drag this back if I wanted to put it next to the steel tab um, or what I could do, let's say I wanted to get rid of this guy. I can simply rename, which is what I did in my sample ribbon above. I can simply right click on this and choose rename and then call it whatever I want it. So if I wanted to call it my stuff again, now I just simply renamed the steel tab to my stuff. Okay. So when I want to start manipulating the available buttons, I can either edit the buttons that I have here, or I can add new ones. So first off to edit, I can simply select right click. And then I get a couple of options here. First, I can change the image being shown. We can make it a large, a small scalable based on the size of the button, or we can actually choose from a random uh, image that's in the system, or we can actually choose a completely custom image. So if you want to go all out, you can totally do so. I can also do things like remove the text, which is a big thing for me. I know what that button is. I know what it's supposed to do. So I would probably come in here and select none. And then that way I get just a picture of the tool that I'm trying to use. Now we can resize this button by simply grabbing one of the edges here. I can drag, make that button smaller, this size right here is pretty good for me. So that's how you could modify an existing button. Now this example here, this would be considered a split button. So I have an actual tool uh, that's activated when I click on the main button, or if I click on this drop down, I'm going to get other kind of sub tools or related tools to this. Now I probably would not keep all of my beam tools nested under here because I'm accessing them all the time. So I can come in here and select one of these and simply drag and drop it out in the main ribbon. Maybe I'll grab poly beam. I use that one a lot. Curved beam. I don't like it. Don't like how it actually measures the parts, so I never use it. Twin profile. We've got a custom component that does it better. Orthogonal beam. Get rid of that guy. Spiral beam. Maybe I'll keep him. So I'll go ahead and drag spiral beam out, and then I can get rid of that drop-down menu. 
And then this is basically what I would do over and over again. I would just come through and sort of edit, remove the text for what I don't want to see or what I don't need to see. And then just resize these buttons to see, you know, whatever I needed to see here. So as you can imagine, you can modify your existing ribbon pretty quickly here uh, if you want to. Now, some other things that you may want to do are just add a brand new button. So rather than trying to you know, edit an existing one or copy something or move something out of another group, maybe I simply just want to add a new button. So let's say I've deleted the plate tools altogether. I can come here and choose simple button, say uh, create steel, and that's the name of these tools, create steel beam, steel column, steel plate, so on. Um, Here's my create steel contour plate. And then I have, again, choosing the options for images, choosing for text. And then I can, again, select drag and drop and place it on my ribbon. So you can go through and delete all the stuff that you don't normally use. And, and you know, all of it's accessible from the quick launch if you need to get access to it again. Uh, or you can come back in here and add it if you find yourself using it from time to time. So customizing is super easy with this tool. Uh, some of these other options here, the check button would mainly be for a button that's permanently on or off. Something like one of these selection icons down here for selecting bolts or parts or, you know, whatever. A drop down button is just that. It's simply a drop down. A split button would be an example of, you know, the weld or the beam that I had deleted where the main button actually does something, but it also has a sub menu of drop down options. A separator is just that. If I want to break up my tools into groups, I can set the thickness and then again drag and drop to, to add a separator to my toolbar to help me group my stuff together, which I kind of like. And then tab we've already seen. Now one thing that's very different here is in the older dialog box, if you remember from a few years ago, you could create custom commands right from here. Um, but now it's been separated into a different uh, dialog. So let's take a look at that here. But to put my new ribbon into effect. All I have to do is save it, close this, and as soon as I click in the background, Tecla notices that, hey, there's a new ribbon file available. Do you want to reload these? And I'll say, sure, let's go ahead and reload those. And then we can watch my ribbon change up here. So now I've got those beam tools, my plate tool, right, there's a column tool in there too, uh, and my separator, okay? So they are instantaneous as soon as you save the file and close out of that editor. Okay, so let's get back to those custom commands. Under the file menu, you can go to settings and then user defined commands. In here, I've already created one. I go into Excel quite a lot. So I added a new custom command. I gave it the name Excel. I chose one of the default Excel images for the icon. And then here under the action, you can see I simply directed it to that executable on my computer. And that created this now as a custom command. Now you could also do something like a website. So let's say I wanted to add a new command that would launch the Tecla forum. So in here, I'll say new, and we'll call this uh, forum launcher. This just has to be a unique name of some kind. So I'll say, okay, full name, Tecla forum, I'm just going to use the same thing for the short name. Just paste that in there. If you have an icon in mind, you can totally use it. Uh, if you want to just choose from one of the out of the box ones, you can do that too. I'm just going to choose the 2D library icon because it's there at the top. We'll say okay. And then what is the action? Again, in the Excel option, I wanted to direct it to my C drive and wherever the, the actual program was located. But it also gives me the option for a URL. So let's go to my browser here, and we'll grab the URL to the Tecla forum. I'll paste that here and then say save. And now I've got a new custom command that's going to launch the Tecla forum for me. Now that I've created those custom commands, I can add them as toolbar buttons. So let's go back here and say settings, ribbon. It's loading the current ribbon. So let's go ahead and add a simple button. I'm going to do a search for Excel. Now, I've already got a, uh, an image for it, like I said, uh, but I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that text. I know exactly what that icon means, so I can go ahead and drag and drop, and now I've got an Excel button. We'll also do the forum launcher. So there's my Tecla forum. We'll do the scalable icon, drag and drop. 
So now I've got those two new external tools to my ribbon. Now before I cancel out of this, I do want to mention that you're not just limited to simple modeling commands or external links. You can link other things here as well. So if there's a certain macro that you use a lot or a certain component you use a lot, maybe I do a lot of clip angles. I can actually search for the clip angle component. Maybe I want to give it a, uh, a custom image. I probably don't have something that will work for a clip angle, but let's just say I want to choose, uh, I don't know, this guy, just for the fun of it. <laughs> um, we can drag and drop that up here, and now I've got something for my clip angle. If I search for the word macro, any macros or any extensions that are loaded in my uh, applications and components library, we can launch the directory browser, the extend command, okay? So anything that you find yourself using a lot, I, I'm a big fan of just having everything right there in front of me, not somewhere buried where I have to go look for it. And I think this is something that you'll adjust over time to your own personal you know, tastes. Um, but let's go ahead and save this. Let's just test the changes that I've made. Yes, I want to reload my ribbon. And now we can see here we've got an Excel button. Let's click on that. Perfect. Opens up Excel for me right away. Let's check my forum button. Here we go. Opens up my browser right to the Tecla Structures forum. And then if I wanted to double click for my component, we open up Clip Angle 141. So anyway, uh, I hope this kind of gets some juices flowing and gets you uh, excited about the possibilities of being able to customize your Tecla. Uh, I am a big fan um, of customization because we all like to work a little bit differently. So if you have any uh, questions or thoughts or comments, go ahead and leave those down below. Uh, I'm going to wrap things up now and um, just say thank you for watching and we'll see you guys next time.